In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the throttle body on this Nissan Pathfinder. Let's get started. I want to remove this brake master cylinder reservoir, and you can do this two different ways. There are either two mounting nuts that go down and hold the reservoir onto these brackets, but I kind of want to get the brackets out of the way. So I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket. And there's going to be two mounting nuts that hold these brackets onto the firewall. Take those off. There's one on one side and one on the other side. Set those aside safely. Now you can pull this away and uh, you create a lot more space to work in this area. Let's pull this intake tube off of the throttle body and the air filter housing. It's got two eight millimeter clamps. So just loosen them up. You don't have to remove these. Now pull it off of the air filter housing. Just try to find the, uh, the right angle that it wants to slide out at. There we go. Now take a five millimeter Allen socket and remove the four bolts that hold on the throttle body. one bolt on each corner. With those removed, you should be able to take the throttle body, pop it off and move this back over here. And you don't necessarily have to do this, but it does make things a whole lot easier. I'm going to unplug the mass airflow sensor. Oh, there we go. Just press on this little tab. You might need two hands to get it off of there. And then if you flip these two clips up, it'll allow you to pull the air filter, the top of the air filter housing with the air filter out of the way. Always take the air filter out when you open this. You don't want debris to land on top and then get sucked back into the engine. But this opens up a whole lot of space for us to work on that throttle body. Now let's unplug the throttle body. Press the tab on this connector. This one's pretty stuck here. I'm gonna grab some uh, pliers. If you do this with pliers, just be very gentle. You don't wanna break any wires or anything or the connector itself. This one is pretty stuck though. There we go. Use this pry bar to pry out at the same time as I pinch the connector and set that aside. All we have left is these two hoses. They do have coolant going through them. So what I'm gonna do to prevent as much loss of coolant as I can is I'm just gonna take some of these special hose crimping pliers and these I'll show you on the other one that I'm gonna use. They don't shut all the way. All they do is they just pinch down on the hose as you can see. This is all it does. So it basically restricts the flow of whatever liquid is in said hoses that you're pinching with them. Don't cr completely crush them. Just squeeze them a little bit. Then you can take your pliers and get the hose clamp slid down on both of these. Now some coolant will come out just because it's gonna be in the throttle body and at the end of these hoses, but it won't continue leaking, which is the, the goal of using these pliers. Let's give the hose a twist. This usually breaks it free. I'll do this same thing to this one. There we go. I heard it pop free. So now, I should be able to slide this down. There's one. The same to this one. There we go. That's sliding down now. Perfect. No coolant loss. And here is the old throttle body. 
let's get the new throttle body in here. Obviously, to install it, you just reverse the removal. These hoses are now lined with some antifreeze, so they actually should slide on pretty easily, which helps get the uh, hose clamps back right where they belong in their original spot. There we go. If they feel weak, like they don't have much spring tension to them, replace them because otherwise you'll have coolant loss happening here. Looks like this hose needs to slide on just a little more. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna cl click this connector back in. We can take off our hose clamps. Let's get the air filter back in. This is also a good time to inspect it and replace it if necessary. You have these three eyelets here. They have to get these tabs slid right through them. That's how the air filter housing locks on. If those are not lined up, you will have air leaks past the filter. That is not good. Clamp these two clamps on and let's reconnect the mass airflow sensor at the top. There we go. Make sure it clicks. If it doesn't click, it's not locked in. Now inspect the gasket on the intake side. If it's in good condition like ours, reuse it. If not, replace it. Now let's get the throttle body reconnected onto the intake. Get these bolts slid through here. If you just start one by hand, it should stay somewhat in place. So it'll be a whole lot easier to get the other ones in. Now these two on the top, are easy to get to. The two on the bottom are a little bit more difficult, especially that one in the back, which also has a bracket going through it. So I'll show you in a second. This one down here, the this retainer bracket has to be secured by the bolt. And then the bolt obviously goes through the throttle body. So get those all lined up. Now let's tighten this up. I'm using my air ratchet, but I'm not using it to tighten it. I'm just using it to quickly get these closer. I'm going to stop right before it tightens. And it's important that you go in a cross pattern for this. Now I'm going to take a ratchet and uh, just make these nice and snug. All I want is to basically squish that gasket down so that's bottomed out. I'll give it a little extra and that's it. You don't need a whole lot. Okay, go in a cross pattern so it can seat properly. All right, I'll double check these first two. Perfect. Now let's get this back in here. If you're struggling to install this, you can just unclip the top of the air filter housing, slide this on. I'm not sure how I was able to slide it out because it won't go back in, but uh, you know, this makes it easier. And then just clip the air filter housing right back into place. And now you can slide this intake tube all the way on here and all the way on here. Let's snug up these two clamps. Don't tighten them a lot. You don't want to strip them out. Just make them snug. And there you have it. Now let's put the brake master cylinder reservoir back and put the two mounting nuts on here. We'll tighten these up. Start both of them before you tighten one, just so you can move it around if needed. And snug these up. Now that the throttle body is replaced, you actually have to go through three different relearn procedures in order for this to function properly. If you don't, the car will still run, but not only will you have a check engine light, but it will not run properly, it will not idle where it should, and it's just not gonna function as it should. It needs to relearn that new throttle body. 
The first procedure we're gonna follow is the accelerator pedal released position learning. Basically, you have to recalibrate the accelerator pedal to that throttle body in the released position. The second procedure we have to do is the throttle valve closed position relearn. Basically, you have to tell that throttle body and the computer of the vehicle how the throttle body needs to sit or the throttle blade when it's in the closed position. It has a sensor in it and it can sense how far open it is. You have to tell it which position is closed. The last one we have to do, and this has to do with the idling of the vehicle and the runability in general, is the idle air volume relearn. It has to talk to the mass airflow sensor, the computer, and of course that throttle body to figure out how far it has to open to idle properly. All these three things need to happen in order for the procedure to be completed. The first one you're gonna to wanna to do is the accelerator pedal release position learning. So to do this procedure, there are a few steps to follow. The first one being your foot not being on the gas pedal, which is done, my foot's on the floor. I'm not touching that accelerator pedal. So now, you need to turn the ignition on. If you have the key, you just turn the key to the on position. Don't start the vehicle and don't just put it to accessory. It's basically the second click. On the push button start, just press it twice and you need to have it on for two seconds and then we'll have it off for 10 and then repeat this step one more time. So on for two seconds, off for 10. So we'll wait until this shows 12 seconds and then we'll turn it back on for another two seconds once it hits 12 second mark. There we go, two seconds, up to 15. I waited a second in between, so that's why I added that. So now we'll wait to 25 seconds. That's it right there. So that should be the accelerator pedal release position relearn. Um, at this point, these steps tell the computer of the vehicle that your foot was not on the accelerator pedal and you want it to relearn the neutral position, the released position, I should say. So that is now done. Let's move on to the next one, which is gonna be the throttle valve closed position relearn. The engine needs to be cold. For this procedure, we're gonna have to start it and let it warm up a little bit, but you can't already have it hot. It has to be cold, so let it sit overnight, a few hours, whatever it takes. Let that coolant cool down. The engine needs to have a cold startup, basically. Then, you do not need a scan tool for this procedure. I have one just so I can demonstrate some data to you, but basically you could just look at the temperature gauge and figure out when it's warming up and when it's cold. But I wanna show you numbers, so I hooked up the scan tool so you can visually see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, with the engine cold, we're gonna start it. We'll let it run. And uh, again, mine is not warmed up. I'm gonna wait for it to warm up. And meanwhile, I'm actually gonna pull up the coolant temperature sensor on this scan tool, just so I can show you it. Okay, so already we're at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's warming up pretty quick. I actually checked it before the uh, engine was started. It was at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we have to wait until it gets to 149 degrees that is what the computer needs to have engine wise in order to start this procedure. So we're just gonna give it a minute, wait for it to warm up. Like I said, 149 degrees uh, or higher. So it, it can be higher, but can't be colder than 149. It needs to have this warm up period. While you wait for the engine to heat up, do not touch that gas pedal. Do not accelerate, just let it idle in park and let it warm up naturally by itself. You don't want to disturb the throttle position, the uh, accelerator pedal. It needs to stay as it is, untouched. So while this is reaching the proper temperature that we're waiting for, I'm gonna to explain to you the next couple steps. After it does get to at least 149 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna to wanna to shut it off and leave it off for at least 10 seconds. While you wait for those 10 seconds to go by, you should hear the throttle body move, uh, so open and close. It's gonna be a very quiet noise, especially if you have the hood closed, but usually you can hear uh, almost like an electric motor humming and uh, the throttle blade moving, and that's what you wanna hear. If you don't hear it, that means it did not go into that relearn procedure and it didn't do what it's supposed to do. Basically what it's doing is it's opening it all the way and closing it all the way, 
several times so that it can learn the maximum open point and the maximum close point, that's it. But it has to do it by itself, not by you pressing the gas pedal. So looks like we're almost there. We're gonna give it a little, little bit longer, a couple more minutes so it can definitely be up to operate, well, not operating temperature, but uh, at least the desired temperature for this procedure. Okay, so it looks like we just reached it. Now I will wait for it to uh, warm up just a few more degrees, uh, just so that the computer can process everything. It has time to uh, figure out that it's actually at that temperature. I'll let it warm up one more, one more step. All right, so at this point, as you can see even right here on our temperature gauge, it is almost at the halfway point, so you know that it is uh, coolant-wise warmed up. Doesn't mean the rest of the drivetrain is, but that's okay. We're only focusing on coolant. At this point, I will shut it off and wait for 10 seconds. I should be able to hear during those 10 seconds the throttle blade close and open. Well, open and close because it's already closed, uh, but that's what you're listening for. So shut it off. I heard it operate within the 10 seconds that I had the engine off, so that's perfect. The procedure worked. We can move on to the final procedure, which is gonna be the most complicated one. Don't be afraid, it's not that bad. It's just a lot of steps and a lot of uh, pre-existing conditions that need to be met. So, let's go over those. This is, by the way, gonna be the idle air volume relearn. This is gonna be one of the most important ones for this procedure because this is where you're telling the computer where to hold that throttle body in order for it to idle properly. Otherwise, it'll kind of be all over the place. You may or may not have already noticed, probably not, but because uh, it's hard to see on camera, but the idle kind of bounces up and down a little and it's never gonna go back to 7, 700, 750 uh, RPM. It's gonna stay above 1,000, uh, actually right after you replace it. If you start it up before you do any of the calibrations, it'll idle at almost 2,000 RPM. So that's obviously not good. Anyway, a few pre-existing conditions need to be met at this point for this third procedure for the idle air volume relearn. The first one is gonna be battery voltage. You need at least 12.9 volts at idle. I can see voltage on my scan tool. We are at 14 volts, so we are all set there. And once again, it's at idle, engine on, not engine off. Engine off, it will never have that many volts because the battery just is not at capacity for that voltage. So um, engine on at least 12.9, we're good there. Engine coolant temperature needs to be at full operating temperature, meaning at least 158 degrees Fahrenheit or at most 212. It has to be between those two, which for us, it should already be. Yes, it has to warm up a little more probably because now it sat for a few minutes and we just shut it off at 158-ish. Um, but it's basically almost at operating temperature already. So we're good there. The uh, shifter needs to be either in park or neutral. So make sure you're probably best to be in park. The um, electrical loads here, so headlights, radio, uh, anything, blower motor, all of that needs to be completely off. Shut off the radio, shut off your headlights. Don't leave them on auto, make sure they are on off. If you have automatic headlights, no fog lights. Shut off your heat, AC, off, everything. Everything needs to be off so that all of the devices that are in here are not pulling any electrical load from the alternator. If your vehicle is equipped with daytime running lights, then you're gonna wanna set the parking brake so that the daytime running lights shut off. So uh, whether it's an electronic parking brake or uh, the pedal down there, just set the parking brake, your lights will shut off. It is very important that no lights are on during this procedure. If you have any dome lights on in the vehicle, shut those off as well. The steering wheel is important that it's straight. You don't, you can't have it turned even if it is straight, but it's one rotation to the side like this, that's no good. You have to have the wheels pointing completely straight with the steering wheel straight. The vehicle speed needs to be zero. So obviously that's why I said it's best to be in parked. You cannot be moving while doing this procedure. Stop and be parked in park with all the other numbers within spec. One more thing we need to do is warm up the transmission. So either let the vehicle idle for a little bit or drive it around for five, 10 minutes and warm that transmission up. Once again, you do not need a scan tool to check this. 
if you just drive it for five or 10 minutes, it should be good to go. Um, I will try to get you that number on this scan tool just so you can have a visual representation of what is even going on here. But uh, you can drive the vehicle around without this procedure done, it's just not gonna idle. So, I mean, it will idle, but it's not gonna idle where it should, it'll idle high. Um, but it's good enough to drive around to warm it up. So, at this point, we have all these things almost met, all these criterias. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the vehicle on. I do still need to let it warm up a little bit after our last procedure. So, we're gonna turn the engine on again. While I let it warm up, I'm gonna pull up some data here so that you can also see it. So what I have here is the transmission temperature sensor, uh, voltage and the temperature itself that is voltage converted to degrees from the uh, computer. But basically what I'm looking for is 0 0.9 volts or less from the sensor. Um, in that case, that'll translate to basically full operating temperature on the transmission fluid. And uh, you achieve that once again, like I said before, either by driving it around or just letting it idle for a while. But to be honest, it will take a long time with just idling. So if you can drive it around, drive it around. It should drive just fine. So we're very close here. I'm gonna let it warm up a little more. You have to have 0 0.9 or less, not this 0 0.99, 0 0.90 or less in order to complete this whole procedure. So once we have that, I know the engine is already at operating temperature. We have 13.8 volts, which is plenty. If I rev it up, we should have even more voltage. Yeah, a little bit, it, it goes up a little. So we have plenty of voltage, everything, all the other conditions are met. So the rest of the procedure, which I'll explain uh, quickly while this is still warming up a little bit slowly. So once, the transmission is warmed up, what we have to do is shut off the vehicle completely. Um, shut it off, let it sit for 10 seconds. Now, while doing this, you wanna confirm that the accelerator pedal is released completely. Do not touch that gas pedal at all before or after you shut it off. I mean, yeah, you can drive it around and, and uh, have the accelerator pedal operating, but as soon as you're ready to shut the vehicle off, remove your foot off that gas pedal. Then turn the ignition on and just let it sit for 10 seconds. Now, after that, you're gonna to wanna to turn it back on and wait three seconds. So after those three seconds, you're gonna to wanna to leave the ignition on. Do not shut it off. And you wanna press within five seconds, the accelerator pedal all the way down and let go of it five times. So one, two, three, four, five, within five seconds, all the way to the floor, all the way back. Then with the ignition still on, count seven seconds. Of course, I'm gonna have my stopwatch here so we can be as accurate as possible. And within, after those seven seconds that you wait, you wanna press and hold the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor for about 20 seconds. We should see the check engine light or the service engine soon light um, start to flash and then it'll stay on solid. Within three seconds of it staying on solid, you wanna let go of that gas pedal immediately and then you can either shut it off and then turn the engine back on or just directly turn the engine on and the procedure should be all set. As you can see right over here, we are fully warmed up. The sensor is sitting at 0 0.88 volts, so that is perfect. Within spec, I know the engine is good. We have plenty of voltage, steering wheel straight, um, and everything else is all set. So we are good to start the procedure. With everything on, we are ready to start the procedure. So now with it fully warmed up, I'm going to shut it off and wait approximately 10 seconds or at least 10 seconds. Here we go. After it gets to 10 seconds, we're gonna turn it on for three seconds. Ignition on, wait for three seconds and then gas pedal. Then wait for seven seconds. And then we're gonna hold the gas pedal all the way to the floor for about 20 seconds. Check engine light will flash. There we go, it's flashing. So we're doing it right. And then once it stays solid, we should um, release it within three seconds. It's flashing quicker. That's doing its job. The procedure is being done. 
We'll wait for it to stop flashing. That's it, it's solid. Let go within three seconds and you should be good to go. At this point, you can start the engine and the idle should drop to where it needs to be. As you can see, it's idling below 1000 RPM. The fans are on, so now with the fans on, uh, of course it's pulling a load, so it's closer to 1000 RPM, but you can see it's dropping. If I rev it, it should drop right back down to idle. Perfect. No hesitation, nice and smooth, immediate response from that gas pedal. And that's it, procedure's done. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.